If I asked you to think of a drivetrain that had no universal joints, no splines, no constant velocity joints, you might picture a go-kart. But is it possible such a drivetrain could exist on a high mobility lorry? Yes! Introducing Tatra trucks. I'll add at this point, they do employ constant velocity joints on their steered axles, but the original 6 befores had none of that. I managed to find a promotional video by Tatra for their 2011 Phoenix 158. The strong back chassis torque tube design is however in principle unchanged since the 1920s. So here you can see the modular components going together for a 6x6 truck and now the front axle in detail. Here you see the front axle, axle halves radiusing about the drive shaft. And this is the important factor, because it means the axle halves do not require any flexible joint or splines. Now in red, we see the high-speed drive shaft from the transfer box going to the diff. Now onto the back two axles of the truck, we can see a similar setup. But it becomes clear the pinion gear sets are hollow, allowing the drive shaft to go through to the rear axle. Conceivably, any number of axles can be added. Here is an older video, which I hope shows the bearing surfaces a bit better. The axle halves actually bear on the inside of the centre housing. And this is where the concept gets a bit tricky. It requires really close tolerances and lots of good quality steel to make it all work. So how well does it work? Are Czech engineers and manufacturers good enough? Absolutely! The Czechs have one of the proudest legacies of mechanical engineering and these trucks have fought in a hundred wars and rebuilt cities afterwards. They have won Parry Dakar Rally six times and are the staple of truck tile teams all across Europe. Now some amongst you might well have been watching this thinking this is uh, not a unique system. I've seen it on Pins and Gowers and you'd be correct. Hans Ledwinker, the Austrian born designer of this system had a son, Eric, who went on to work as design engineer for Steyr Daimler Puck, the original creators of the Pins and Gower. Um, where Eric designed the Pinzagauer and its small but perfectly formed little brother, the Haflinger. The Czech Republic, formerly Czechoslovakia, being in Central Europe, was occupied first by the Germans, then, following their defeat, the Soviets. And as testament to Tatra's engineering capabilities and Mr. Ledwinka's skills as a designer, both occupiers funneled their resources into Tatra with the Wehrmacht using thousands of Tatra 111s and Mr Hitler being so impressed with Tatra's cars that controversy still exists over how much Mr Porsche plagiarised Tatra's designs in order to create the Volkswagen Beetle. Soviet rule unfortunately saw Mr Ledwinka imprisoned for the crime of being a brilliant designer and having dinner with Mr Hitler a few times. Despite the designers' affiliation with their former adversaries, the Soviets recognised engineering brilliance and appreciated rugged construction. So they moved car production over to Skoda, where Tatra's original design influence could be seen right up to the point Volkswagen brought Skoda and forced them to make boring cars. A little bit ironic when you think Volkswagen's success can, amongst other things, be attributed to Hitler's love of Tatra cars. With no car manufacturing to distract Tatra from trucks, the Soviets selected Tatra 
manufacturer of off-road trucks for the Eastern Bloc, which saw Tatra concept drivetrains also used in Polish-built OT-64 Scott amphibious armoured personnel carriers. After the fall of the Soviet Union, the company was left in the hands of the Czech government. The Czech government set up manufacturing in India with the help of Vectra, a firm from the UK. Tatra also managed to secure a few high value contracts with Arab nations, which kept the company going until the Czech government privatised the company and sold it to T-Rex in 2003. Ownership then changed to a large conglomerate, then to Bakar, who owns DAF trucks, and so you can see many, uh, many Tatras with DAF cabs. They also have a Packard built engine um, which puts them in the um, modern European market being Euro 5 or 6 or whatever compliant. In 2013, Tatra was sold back to a Czech firm. Confusingly, the firm that bought Tatra has now changed its name to Tatra Trucks. So it's a Czech company called Tatra, owned by Tatra, in Czech hands. As previously mentioned, the axles are all modular, so you can basically carry on adding them until you run out of money. Thank you very much for watching Turbo Productions today. I hope you have enjoyed this episode, and will do me a massive favour by liking this video, sharing and subscribing if you have not done so already. I have another channel, Turbo Conquering Mega Eagle, of which I make things with my own hands. And you can support my activities on YouTube by becoming a patron. Link in the description below. Thank you again, and until next time, goodbye.